of the three billboards outside. Then put an end to shit, you fucking retard. This is just a fucking start. Why don't you put that on your Good Morning Missouri fucking wake up broadcast, bitch? Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. You know, it took me a while to get to this film, and I'm glad I did. So how did I feel about it? Well, let's get into it. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out by going ahead and clicking that subscribe button. Become one of my subscribers so you can get all the content that I have to provide. Also click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads and also give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. Now, like I said, you know, this film came out on uh, earlier earlier this month in November and you know it just kept slipping under my radar I've been wanting to see this film uh, for quite some time but I'm glad that I finally did and when I say I'm glad that I finally did I'm not just saying that because again this film is a contender for one of the best films of the year I'm not necessarily going to say the best but it is possibly the top 10 that I have seen this year and I have missed some films you know but hey I can only talk about what I've seen and um, this movie is being directed by Martin McDonough. He's done maybe like four or five films before. And the reason why I say four or five films is because in his filmography, one of his films was like a short film. And I don't know if you consider that a full film or not. And another one was just kind of like a video short uh, video that had to do with another movie he uh, was part of. So, you know, that's why I say four or five. And the film that he's most known for is, and he's a writer and director, and I have a lot of respect for directors when they also write the film because they just have that much more creative control. And the, the film he's most known for is Seven Psychopaths, which came out in 2012. And I haven't seen that film. It got away from me. I still want to see it. But around that time, I do remember all the other critics and fan films and whatnot were just talking about how great it was and had, you know, such a high anticipation, you know, for that film before it came out. And in that film you know it's, it's seven people with uh, Colin Farrell, Sam Rockwell, Woody Harrelson, Christopher Walton, Tom Waits, Abby Cornish, and Olga Kurilenko. And the two names that pop out to me the most is Sam Rockwell and uh, Woody Harrelson. Reason being is they're also part of this film, Three Bo Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. And Sam Rockwell popped up on the scene for me back in 2010 in Iron Man 2. He was Justin Hammer, one of the nemesis to Iron Man, Tony Stark. And I know he was more popular before that movie. I, I said that he popped up on the scene for me. But he was also part of Green Mile. And Woody Harrelson, I'm, I'm sure you pretty know who uh, Woody Harrelson is. I don't think he's ever won an Academy Award, but he was nominated for The People vs. Larry Flint, which was like back in the 90s. But the main character in this movie is uh, Frances McDormand or whatever. And she, and I, I'm trying not to say whatever, somebody in the comments told me not to say that as much. But she won the Academy Award for Fargo, which came out in 1996. And uh, she was also nominated in 2005 and 2006 for Almost Famous and uh, North Country. And as the film starts off, you already know with Frances McDormand, she plays a character named Mildred. You can already tell that she's a phenomenal actress or whatever, and that she put a lot of heart and soul into this performance. And she does that from the first frame all the way to the last frame of this film. And what the film is about uh, is it takes place in Ebbing, Missouri. And to be honest with you, this doesn't necessarily this isn't a true story when I tried to look up some information but I'm not even sure if Ebbing Missouri is a real place because I whether I was I was I can't talk as I was watching this movie I was just dying to know two things what year this film took place in and I'll talk about that towards the end of the review and just how small or big this town was and when I was looking things up like every link was just a review to this film and I finally found a website and it gave me like every city in Missouri but I still couldn't find anything on Ebbing Missouri or whatever so if you know please let me know in the comment section below but what it's about is um uh, Mildred played by Frances McDormand she's very upset she's distraught she's just very tired and frustrated because uh, sometime like seven to eight months ago you know her daughter was out walking and was uh, raped and brutally murdered 
and there has been no arrest there has been no convictions and it seems like the police the, the small police department led by woody harrison he's the chief police it seems like they're just sweeping this under the rug and so she's just tired of it gathered some money that she has saved and she's borrowed and you know did this and did that to get some money so she puts up three billboards that puts the case in the public's eye and that just stirs up a whole bunch of mess in this town with her just trying to you know find out you know who murdered her daughter and why no one has been arrested so early on in the film you can already you know kind of just sympathize you can't empathize because i'm not a woman and i don't have any children but you can automatically just sympathize with her character as to why how frustrated she is and she just wants justice or whatever so she's the main protagonist in this film and just like right off the bat you are on her side because you sympathize with her and also just because you wanted to find out the uh the murder mystery yourself now um like i said this is one of the best films that i've seen this year because it's a great story great plot great writing and great performances from all the actors all, all throughout this film not just from sam rockwell woody harrelson and francis mcdormand but other characters as well even peter dinklage is in this film too and he plays a nice uh little funny role and you know has an important role to play himself and what i really liked about this film besides the performances by the actors is just how honest and true the film really is because everybody in this film is basically just kind of tired and fed up with life not that they're looking for a pity party and they're just tired but you know they're just dealing they're just going through life dealing uh they're just going through life with the hands that were dealt and i mean life is not fair and this film is a, t a true testament of that and so there you know tomorrow is not promised in real life and in this movie or whatever and a lot of people while they're just in their 40s and 50s and you know 60s or whatever they they just kind of live their lives like tomorrow isn't promised so i'm not going to have any filter if i come across with somebody i'm just going to tell them how i feel and if they like it fine if they don't that's fine too and that is the case with every character in this movie and just something that stood out to me the most and so something that another thing that this film did really well is combined it, it can be described as a dark comedy drama and and to me in my opinion some it's, it's really difficult to combine comedy with you know dark uh serious moments and this film melded those two aspects very very well at the very beginning of this film i was laughing very very hard and at the same time i felt sorry for a lot of characters in this movie and was just kind of saying to myself oh damn man why did that have to happen to you or why did she do that or man this is so unfortunate you know man i wish i could fill your shoes just for a day because i can tell that you're going through a lot of pain and for some reason you know the director uh mcdonough he was just able like to make you feel like like really bad and really sad and angry for these characters but then like the next scene give you some levity and a light and some goofy mannerisms by one character in particular uh which is sam rockwell or whatever and the way it just transitioned back and forth and bounced back and forth like you know uh a ping pong table or whatever i thought that that was done quite well and it was very thorough and like i said um mildred's character whatever she's very really tired she's frustrated she's distraught there was a brief glimpse back in time to where you can see what type of loving mother she was and th with the events that happened to her daughter how she's changed drastically and she just literally hanging on to a thread you know with just not even one hand but just one pinky just you know just trying to cling on to life you know trying to find some type of inspiration to wake up the next morning and keep on going for her son she's going through a lot of course her uh, her daughter die she's not married anymore her husband left her a long time ago for like a 19 year old and you know without the film being just rude and cruel you know it's being rubbed in her face a number of times too and it just makes it even worse pouring salt on an open wound you know because the you know his new girlfriend is like a, a young 19 year old with this hot body but she is freaking dumb as a doorknob or whatever you know what i'm saying so that's sad that she has to go through that but like i said the film also makes you laugh because it's just funny with how stupid she really is i mean i was just watching this like please don't say anything just shut your mouth 
mouth, you, uh, you know. And uh, seeing Rockwell's character, uh, he, he plays somebody named Dixon or whatever. You know, he's a mama's boy and gets kind of pushed over by everybody. Um, you know, his colleagues, the townspeople, pretty much everybody. And he's a drunk. It's kind of funny and fascinating how he's drunk every scene that he's in, living with his mom, but he's still able to have a prominent force on the police force or whatever, you know. But, hey, you know, that's just how it is sometimes. And Woody Harrelson is, like, on the fence the whole time because he is really a good man or whatever. And I don't want to give too much away, but, um, you know, in my opinion, he really is a good man and is on the fence just being pulled in every direction and it's not his fault. He doesn't know how to handle the situations in because he has this illness on one side, but then he has people chewing him out on this other side because they don't feel like he's doing the best of his ability to, you know, resolve the situation of finding out who the murderer is uh, you know, for uh, Mildred's daughter or whatever. And something that I just really liked about him and the characters as well is everybody is going through something and no one knows how to really deal with it. Everybody is just kind of lashing out at each other. And while they're having these conversations and dialogue, while they're lashing out and being very angry with each other, you know, seconds later, they really do turn into caring human beings and can lend out a helping hand. I mean, there's just one scene in a police station to where, um, uh, Woody Harrelson's character, uh, Wilgoby, I think is his name, and Mildred, you know, they're pretty frustrated with each other right now, and I see both sides, but there's something that happens to one of the characters, and they just both snap into, like, you know, human, hum, hum, humanitarian goddess or whatever, and they're just there for, uh, they're there for each other, you know, and I'm just like, man, you know, this moment right here was just really touching, and that just goes to show how great the story and the writing was from the director. Um, something else that really just stood out to me was the score in this film. There is this character that dies in this film early on. And I was just like, man, why did you do that? You know, like, why did you have to put yourself in this situation and die? And I'm kind of playing with the words right here because I don't want to give it away. But this character still came back and was able to speak to the rest of the cast while he was dead through letters. And these were some of the most best scenes in the whole movie for me, just because the words that uh he was uh uh the words that he was saying had so much weight to him but there was also like a lovely score in the background that had to do with a piano a violin a guitar and um a flute and it was so beautiful i mean and there was like three letters that he read to certain characters that popped up in different you know parts of the movie and it just spoke volumes to me one in particular like i said had those instruments another one was kind of like an opera classical song but the one with all the instruments it, it was so lovely to me that when the film ended i was walking out of the, the theater wasn't that it wasn't that packed i was walking out the theater down the stairs and they started playing the music again and i actually stopped turned around and went back to sit down so I can watch the credits and listen to that song, that score again, because to me, at least, it was just that great. You know, I, I would not mind if someone were to burn this song for me and I listen to it like while I'm reading in my car or just when I want to be in deep thought. I mean, so, you know, scores and soundtracks is not something that stands out to most people. But in this particular film, it did an amazing things for me, at least. And it made me love the film much better. And I, I really don't want this to go on too long. I, I try to... Um, I'm trying to shorten this, but I, I really do want to cover everything. Um, there was also, uh, it wasn't, you know, not that much racism in this movie, but they there was dialogue that addressed it. And, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to say that I wish I would have saw it, but there was no really scenes to back it up either. So, you know, I, I kind of like the way they addressed it, but they could have, you know, combed that through just a little bit more. But that's just a little right, right there. But overall, guys, I really did love this film. Um somebody else, another commenter of mine a subscriber i don't want to mention his name because he may not want his name mentioned he really said that he liked the film too he said that i should see it and i was like yes I, I really want to see it but he said he liked the film but he was disappointed with the ending and i i talked to my mom she liked the film as well but she was disappointed with the ending as well and it didn't make sense to her and so i went in kind of preparing myself for an ending that possibly could be disappointing but to be honest with you the ending was not really disappointing to me um it was a realistic ending because towards the end of the film 
Mike, well, let me let me back up a little bit. The one of the characters that died and how how he was still in, able to influence others that were alive in in his letter writing, um, that was something that stood out to me as well. And he really inspired one character to pick themselves up by the bootstraps and to you know be the person that they really wanted to be. And I don't want to spoil it for you. And towards the end of the film, that person really did become the person that they really wanted to be. And then there was one scene in the bar where things were coming together, and I was like, okay, this is just too cool coincidental i hope this film doesn't just I, I like happy endings but i don't like happy endings just to be forced down your face or whatever and i thought the film was going to go that way but it did not go that way and the film ended in kind of a realistic ending to where life is hard life sucks and sometimes even though you're deserving you always just don't get the outcome that you want that you deserve so what will you do in these situations are you going to ball up in the fetal position in a corner and cry and beg for pity or are you just really going to try to get yourself together and keep on living out your day the best way you can and make the ending that you want and that's what two characters kind of did in this movie um, it did not necessarily end the way they wanted, but they were just like, you know, hey, it is what it is. I'm just going to make the best out of it. I'm going to make this happy ending for myself, even though it is not what I want, you know, and that kind of made sense to me or whatever. And I hope that makes sense to you. But guys, I really did enjoy this film. I think you will, too. If I had to rate three billboards out of Ebbing, Missouri, out of a one out of ten, I would easily give this a nine out of ten. Yes, a nine out of ten. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Become one of my subscribers so you can get all the content that I have to provide. You can also click the bell so you can be notified when I do make uploads. And also, guys, check me out on my website, justmyopinion.net. I would really appreciate it. You can bookmark it because I do have written reviews for all the latest films as well. Also, guys, look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen and I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for three boil boards outside of Ebbing, Missouri, starring Francis McDormand, Sam Rockwell, and Woody Harrelson, written and directed by Martin McDonough. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.